Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this regular to the Com video, we have a couple of additional AMD pieces of news. Of course, CS 2017 has shown off the Vega architecture to the world, where AMD revealed it in kind of an odd fashion. We did an architecture analysis, which I'll link in the video description, but a couple of new pieces of news have popped up concerning Vega, which we'll tackle in this video, and that includes shots of the actual GPU, not the PCB, but just the raw GPU. Uh, we have an actual official demo of Doom at 4K, and finally we have a whole bunch of Summit Ridge slash Ryzen motherboards, and they are complete with their requisite specifications. So let's go through the stack, shall we? You get it? Stack, high bandwidth, oh, okay, I'll stop. Anywho, starting with the Vega GPU, you can see that, yes, it does have a pretty damn large bit of silicon, which is, of course, the big um, main primary one at the very top. And then underneath that, you've got the two smaller pieces of silicon, which are naturally the uh, HBM2 memory. Now, from what we can see, it looks like each of these has 8 gigabytes of memory, which means a total of 16 gigabytes which is quite interesting because the demos we've seen up until this point have had a total of 8 gigabytes of HBM2. Now, do you remember with our analysis that we had earlier on, technically speaking, you can have up to 32 gigabytes in Vega, but that's going to be very prohibitively expensive for the uh, GPU because obviously not only do you have to have all those additional uh, traces uh, for the HBM2, you, well, HBM2 memory is not exactly cheap and cheerful. It's not like buying a stick of DDR3. So there is that. But the GPU is probably about 520 to 540 mm squared. That's what most people have been estimating it. It looks rather pretty, at least in my opinion. And obviously it does ruffle stomp Fiji. Uh, Fiji had just 4 gigabytes of HBM1 memory. So not only do you have the fact that it's putting out about twice the amount of uh, clock speed, you've also got that additional um, that additional amount of RAM. And do remember as well, we were talking about in the analysis, you've got the virtual memory and virtual memory addressing thanks to the uh, caching system. And that's going to be really interesting, mostly for folks who have fast SSDs. We're not talking about someone who has, like, perhaps even a SATA 3. But if you have something like M.2 or above, ideally, then uh, it's going to be very cool. Anyway, on to Doom. There's nothing particularly new here. I would love to know what actually they were running in terms of the difference between the demo here and the demo that was shown off previously. It's a very short video and about 30 -ish seconds long, but what they do show, of course, is Doom running on Ultra, once again utilizing Vulkan, and supposedly it's ruffle stomping 60 FPS. Now, they are basically um, showing off a whole bunch of other stuff. There was Star Wars Battlefront, of course, that was shown off, and it looks really impressive so far. Frankly speaking, Ryzen is very impressive for CPUs, yes, but Vega, I really want to know what's happening. Um, there are some rumours and reports I don't really want to go super in-depth into in this video because I primarily want to keep it official stuff, but I have been hearing that, once again, uh, in the background, AMD have been demonstrating this against an overclocked GTX 1080 that's like 20% above, and it's still absolutely destroying it, which is still very, very... Very impressive frame rates on the GTX 1080, so we can only imagine what Vega is capable of. But it is worth remembering that Pascal is an older generation of GPU, and obviously with Vega, it's, uh, well, it's not just Polaris, but bigger. It's an entire new architecture. They've made numerous efficiency changes, so I'm not really surprised it's doing so well. Finally, let's go through the AM4 motherboard situation, shall we? There's no point having a really good CPU or a very good graphics card if you don't have a particularly lovely motherboard, which, of course, in the case of Ryzen, it is going to be utilizing the AM4 platform. Generally speaking, you've got the normal shiners such as dual-channel DDR4 memory, NVMe, M.2 SATA, USB 3.1, which is Generation 3, and 
uh, sorry, Generation 1 and Generation 2. And naturally, you've got PCIe 3.0 compatibility with numerous amounts of slots uh, up to three. So there have been a multitude of different motherboards which have been on display at CES. And I can't go through all of them in this video, but they include manufacturers such as MSI, Gigabyte, Biostar, Asus, and ASRock. And all of those have had different motherboards, including the X370, um, the B350, and, uh, well, the A320, which is pretty awesome. Naturally, this also means that a whole bunch of different uh, PC manufacturers, OEMs in many cases, have also been uh, creating different water-cooled and custom-cooled systems, and these include iBuyPower, CyberPiece, PowerPC, um, Overclockers UK, Origin PC, and so on and so on. Finally, we've got a whole bunch of different motherboards. I don't really need to tell you what's actually on them, I think, in many cases, because it's pretty self-explanatory. You can see that the PCB looks pretty bare bones. I went through this yesterday, or perhaps the day before. Obviously, this is mostly a function of a lot of the uh, bits and pieces, like the North Bridge, the South Bridge, and graphics card, and all this other stuff now being integrated onto the uh, CPU. We've started to see this as well with uh, Intel boards, so... Uh, obviously, this is just a natural progression of that. Obviously, you've got the usual assortment of voltage regulators and other bits and bobs, as well as, of course, the PCIe slots and M2 slots. The fact also that Ryzen is only using a dual-channel memory controller means that, obviously, you've got even fewer traces on the board, which means you can adorn it with that rather pretty-looking artwork. For folks who really like showing off their rig, for example, the Windows solutions, it's going to be rather nice. Now... I will also add in that supposedly the Ryzen-based uh, PCs, AM4 motherboards, as well as cooling solutions, are still going to be available at the first quarter of 2017. However, if you're going to ask me a date, there is none at the moment. Uh, so we can only just wait and see. Which kind of sucks. But, there you have it. I think that's just about it for this particular video. I have no doubt whatsoever that there is going to be a slew of leaks over the next couple of days until the actual graphics cards drop. Um, and we're going to, of course, be fully covering Vega throughout its uh, release schedule. That's all I'll say on that. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I shall see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.